Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In the past, we've talked a lot about addressable LED strips, but there are other forms of addressable LEDs. So today, let's compare four types of LED puck lights and see some of the advantages and disadvantages between these various types. Now to start off, some of these I've already shown off before in the live stream I did around this time a year ago. I've linked it in the video description and in there we talk and take a look at about 10 different puck style addressable LEDs, including funky ones with special lenses that project a galaxy type pattern for instance. Make sure to give that a watch. Today however, we're going to take a look at what modern types are available to use in your install this year. Pucks are a unique style, very different from strip, or also very different from bullet pixels, which are also used a lot on house installs. Pucks lower the resolution you have versus a strip and bullet pixels even more, but they provide a higher light output per puck and generally run more efficient than for instance a 12 volt resistor or regulated pixel. Especially pucks with a lens on there can provide quite a nice look, but as always it all depends what you are looking to accomplish or want as a look. So today, today it's uh, it's all about the, well, the, these kinds of things, pucks. We're going to compare these pucks in regards to light output, power usage per 10, white color temperature, and CRI, but we'll also take a look at the PWM flicker frequency and I'll have some notes on power injections. Most of these measurements won't really be compatible with other or official measurements out there, but at least there's something you can compare between my measurements. All tests today are performed using a Quinn LED Dig Octa. This is an 8 channel WLED digital LED controller with Ethernet built in. Perfect for doing shows using X lights or just running effects with WLED during other times. I combine it with a Dig Octa Power 5 for the 12 and 24 volt variants and with a Power 5 HV to run a 48 volt variant directly, including fuses and everything else. If you're looking for a WLED controller that has everything built in so you can focus on installing the LEDs, consider getting one. Oh. And don't forget, everything we talk about today is going to be listed in the video description. And if you go through those affiliate links, it really helps out the channel and everything I do. If you decide to take that extra step, thank you very much. First of the contenders is the 12 volt LED puck. Let's say this is the classic. It has three individual LED packages on there, in this case of the RGBW variety. So it has a red, green and blue and a dedicated white LED. These have been available for years and most often come with the three little dome shaped lenses on the top to project the light outward a bit in a three lens pattern onto the wall. Although the lens projection is not as pronounced as some other we'll see today. You also have these in 20 volt variants, but then those have six LED packages to drop the voltage down and that also generally makes them bigger. So that's not always desired. In regards to light output, I call these medium bright and using the Quindor measurements method, these read about 506 lumens. That might be a bit more than the others actually measure, but this is because they have the least amount of spacing together. So it's not really the light output of a single puck hitting my meter, but multiple in this case. With a lot of pucks, you can choose the distance between the pucks. So, well, that will always be a variable in that regard. To produce this amount of light, the 10 pucks are using 3.6 watt at the mentioned 12 volt. Since it's 12 volt and relatively thin cable, You'll need to inject per 50 pucks if you want to be able to run them at 100% white. So not RGB white, but the dedicated white channel. If you'd like to run them white and also some other channels at the same time, I'd recommend injecting every 25 pucks or so. But running normal patterns or single colors or white 
the dedicated white at 100%, I'd say you'd be fine with front plus end for about 100 pucks in between. I also have a PWM flicker meter, and while the PWM is determined by the chips used inside, for this type it's most often a UCS2904, which provides around 1600 Hz PWM, PWM, <laughs> so 1.6 kilohertz, and that's a fair frequency. Not the best, but also not the worst. CRI-wise and white color temperature, these things aren't great. The color temperature is relatively cool at 3166 Kelvin, and the CRI, so white color quality, is low. A low CRI 61 with an R9, that's a red color, of minus 60. Yeah, these are not providing a great white spectrum at all. So these are okay for accent and fun lighting, but treat the white light as just another color. They're not usable for anything else. These pucks can either be screwed in directly where you're mounting them, or they can be clicked inside of a metal track you can buy separately. Okay, moving on to the second puck we're looking at today. That's a 24 volt RGBW variant. This is a much newer type, and even though it's 24 volt, it only has a single LED package with a single large big lens, which makes it project a very nice pattern on the wall. The most focused of those we are comparing today. Internally, this is done using high voltage diodes for green and blue, combined with having multiple diodes in series, especially for the red. All in all, this makes for a very nice single projected cone pattern, which I can really appreciate. Light output wise, 100% white produces 269 lumen, but remember, this variant is much further spaced apart than the other variant we looked at before. The 10 pucks use 7.44 watt to do so. These are 24 volt, but can still use relatively a lot of power, so you can do about 100, again, pucks with front plus end injection, with no dimming in the middle, unless you really push it with multiple colors at 100% uh, on all pucks at the same time. But if you're using effects and colors and 100% dedicated white, you should be fine with front plus end over 100 pucks. Now for the white, these pucks emit a 2100 Kelvin white color, which has a CRI of 77. Again, that's not great, but fine for accent lighting. But the white color is odd though. It sounds very warm with 2100 Kelvin, but in reality, it's more of a, a piss yellow and not warm at all. I don't like it too much personally. The R9 also reflects this, being just 27. Well, that's officially better than the previous pucks. The shade of white is just not great. The PWM frequency is determined by the IC again, and in this case, that's a TM1814, so its frequency is around 1000 Hertz, which also uh, I measured and well, it, it, it's it's low nowadays. These pucks are a different design and they're designed to glue directly into your mounting location without an extra profile or screws or anything like that. Because of the glue method, I'd advise to clean the surface well with some alcohol, for instance, before applying them and to still maybe screw in the cable with a clip every few of them to make sure that if they do come loose, it doesn't all come crashing down. Hey, do you like these comparisons with actual technical data? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and come along for new videos and live streams. Moving on to our third sample today, we have the very newest, and that's a RGB CCT puck based on the WS2805 chip. That's actually the ones I, uh, I showed in the intro. This means it can do red, green, and blue, but also has two colors of white available, allowing for some unique effects. This one uses the most modern techniques to keep size down. Although it runs on 24 volt, which traditionally means you'd need six diodes of each color, they use LED packages which have multiple diodes inside, achieving the dropping of voltage that way over fewer LED packages. The configuration is three white LED packages with two diodes for each shade of white and a single large package in the middle which does the colors. Light output wise, 100% warm white 
or cold white produces 653 lumens or 656 lumens respectively, and each of those shades uses 5.52 watt for 10 pucks. Color temperature wise, the warm is 3000K and the cold is 6800K. Mixing both at 100% gives off a 4400K shade, and with the default settings in WLED, the lumens stay around the same at 700. CRI wise, these are the best out of the test. The cold white is around CRI 80, and the warm white even hits CRI 92 with an R9 of 60, a decent CRI 90. I even tried mixing warm white and a bit of orange to make it a nice shade of 2600K with a CRI of 95 and an R9 of 86. That's about the best you can expect coming from a puck like this, and they absolutely provide the best white light quality out of the test, both in color accuracy and brightness. So, hey, because these pucks use the modern WS2805 chip, the goodness doesn't stop there. These run at a very nice PWM frequency of 4.3 kilohertz, and they also measure at that. Good for people that are sensitive to this, or, for instance, being on camera. With the power usage being about 5.52 watt for 10 of them, power injection really depends on what you're going to do with them. For a single white, you can go, you can do again 100 with front plus end injection. However, if you plan to run them harder, more colors or at 100% at the same time, then I'd lower that number slightly and inject more often. Personally, I, I really, really like these pucks. That's also why uh, I put them on the table here to show them in the video. Uh, it uses the most modern techniques and squeezes a good light output factor and RGB CCT in a 30 millimeter form factor combined with the highest PWM frequency available, making them a great choice overall and for being on camera. It also means these pucks can be applied directly or in, uh, because of the 30 millimeter size, or used in an alley profile to mount them, so lots of options there. All right, let's move to the last contestant today, and that's again a very different variant. It's a 48 volt RGBW puck. These work very differently from the earlier variants. While those use multiple diodes in series to drop the voltage, that's already better than uh, 12 volt uh, bullet style pixels, which I use a resistor or a regulator. Uh, using diodes to drop is much more efficient. Uh, these 48 volt versions use a buck converter per puck. That means you can feed them a 48 volt and then each puck individually converts it down to 12 volt. The benefit of doing it this way is very, very long runs without the need for power injection. This is because the voltage the LEDs run at is no longer directly linked with the voltage coming in. So even if the 48 volt drops to 40 volt or even 30 volt, since you're converting to 12 volt anyway, that means every puck even down the line will still be even brightness, despite the voltage drop. These pucks also come with 16 gauge cable pre-attached and beefy connectors so all in all, it makes for a very easy to use system. The downside, price. You'll easily pay twice as much, if not three times as much for a string of these pucks versus the others. They're also a bit hard to get, not being available from AliExpress, but having to go to Alibaba to buy them there. Controller compatibility is also a problem. Most controllers only go up to 24 volt. Luckily, in my Quinn LED lineup, you can use a Dig Octa with a Power 5 HV to run 48 volt directly. And my Diff Advanced line is also 48 volt compatible. Later this year, I will also have another type of easy to use controller that will also be 48 volt compatible. So again, stay subscribed for that. Right, technical specifications of these 48 volt pucks. Light output wise, at 100% warm white, they give off 266 of Q lumens. And they use 7.2 watt while doing so for 10 pucks. Using the buck converters makes them a bit less efficient. The warm white is a nice 2700K with a good shade and has a CRI of 79. Fair, but with an R9, so red, of minus 10, still not great. Uh, but since it's a nice shade of white, it'll do good for accent lighting. 
A downside of the buck converters is idle usage. These use about 4.5 watts of power even while off. With the controller being about 1 watt, that's about 3.5 watt per 10 of them while being off, not producing any light. If you'd have 100 of them, that's already 35 watt of power usage while showing no light. That's something to keep in mind. The other pucks are more around 1 to 1.5 watt for 10 of them when, when off, so that's easily one third or even one fourth of that. The IC used, I think, is also a UCS2904 with a PWM frequency, and also what I measured, of 1600 Hz, which is fair. Now, power injection wise, as I said, these are unique. Combining 16 gauge wire with buck converters at 48 volt makes it so you can do really, really long runs and still have no visible light drop off at all. Let's say you can run up to eight amps through a single edge injection. And since they use about 7.2 watts for 10 of them, that would mean you can string along 500 of these lights in practice. And with cable distances and such, I'd say it's more like 300 to 400 realistically. That's still a huge amount of lights from a single edge injection and none of those other lights will do that. It's very much a convenience trade-off versus price trade-off. Hate or actually can't use extra wires to inject? They might be worth the extra cost to you. And that about sums it up. Or rather, here's a quick summary on screen with all the details and also pricing indication per 10 pieces. As you can see, these variants all differ quite a lot and it's up to you really to determine what type is best for you. As I already mentioned in this video, I really like this 24 volt WS2805 type a lot. Good light output, good PWM and RGB CCT while still being relatively small. But there is something to be said for the RGBW type that uses glue pads also if you can't screw where you want to install them, or that 48 volt model if you just hate doing power injections and everything you need to do otherwise. In the end, it's up to you. Hopefully you have found this comparison useful. And as I started out, I will have some affiliate links in the video description for you if you want to take a look closer look at these lights. Those links don't cost you anything, but they absolutely help me out. Everything in this video was tested using Quinn LED digital LED controllers. And if you want to achieve the same great results, maybe consider using those too. They come with an ESP32 level shifter and even onboard power distribution, power conversion, like for the, if you're running 24 volt or 48 volt for the electronics and fusing. So you don't need to worry about any of those things. All right, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you back in a new video or live stream. Bye-bye.